and welcome. And thank you ever so much for having us here in Lund. Thank you. So, Anne, let's go back to the beginning. What got you started in physics? What was your motivation? I, I think I have been thinking about uh, physics and mathematics at a very young age, so I don't really remember. But I, I had scientists in my, in my family, so maybe I was a little bit inspired by my ancestors, but uh, this is simply something I like to do and uh, I continue to do. <laughs> I should say absolute congratulations, of course, for winning. I'm, I'm sure I'm the hundredth person to offer you those. Uh, More than that. <laughs> those congratulations. But what went through your mind when you got that phone call? Well, I can tell you that the only thing that went through my mind was, how am I going to continue my lecture? Because I was <laughs> in the middle of the lecture and the, the people from, from the, the academy wanted me to, to stop and to just be on the phone. And I had 100 students waiting for me. <laughs> and, uh, but it has to be secret, one more hour. So this was the only thing that went to my mind, how I'm going to, to survive the next hour. <laughs> and actually what I did is actually go back to my, to my lecture and uh, continue teaching. So, uh, Getting the Nobel Prize, uh, I simply didn't have time to think <laughs> about it. Maybe you could tell us just a little bit about At A Second Physics and, 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 and what you won the award for. Well, At A Second Physics is the, the science of uh, generating uh, very, very short uh, light pulses in the At A Second range and, and using them for, uh, for, in particular, for studying uh, electron uh, motion in, in matter. And I won the Nobel Prize because uh, I contributed to uh, the discovery of, uh, of the phenomenon that is used uh, for the generation of these attosecond light pulses, which is called high order harmonic generation. So this was back at uh, the end of the 80s in, in France. Uh, we were looking at uh, the emission of light uh, when atoms are exposed to a very strong laser field. And instead of uh, seeing uh, fluorescence light, which, we, which was the goal, we saw a very high order harmonics of the laser field. And, and this was unexpected and extremely fascinating. Then a few years later, it was conjectured that uh, maybe in the time domain, this uh, high order harmonics would uh, would make a very, very short light pulse, a train of attosecond light pulse. And, and this was uh, measured experimentally, uh, actually 14 years later in 2001 by my uh, two co-laureates, Pierre Agostini and uh, Ferran Krauss. Um, talk us through a little bit of your career to get to, to, to that point. What were some of the, I know you've been working in the field, as you said, for a long time. So what may be some of the breakthroughs that you achieved during that time? This, this happened uh, actually 37 years ago, so it's a long time ago. And at, at the beginning of uh, my career, it was after my, my, my thesis, but uh, I was a young researcher at that time. And this was an uh, uh, unexpected result, and, uh, which was fascinating. So I think this is the, the, the greatest uh, uh, scientific breakthrough I've been part of. And uh, this is why I got the Nobel Prize for. <laughs> Yes. So how important has the APS been during your uh, career? The APS has been important. I've been a member of the APS for a very long time. I think um, end of the uh, 80s, uh, I became member. I became fellow in 1998. And I think that was very important. This was beginning of my career. I I'm, I'm convinced this was important for getting position in, in Sweden, for example. And, uh, and just recently, I. Um, I got the APS uh, Davison German Prize, so I'm very, very proud of that. In Minneapolis, there'll be a lot of people there from all over the world. And, and I've heard you speak before about the importance of international collaboration. Yeah, uh, international collaboration uh, for me is very important. Everything we do, it's collaboration and it's, it's international collaboration. So European collaboration, I think has been very important for the, the field of attosecond science and, and in general international co collaboration. It's, I think it's, uh, it's fun, it's important, 
Of course, a little bit of competition is good, but uh, I believe more in communication, Com communi communicating the results, the ideas. I, I think uh, this is something important for science to move forward. I believe you're only one of a handful of uh, women to win the uh, Nobel Prize for uh, physics. Uh, how important do you think diversity in physics is? Uh, I am the fifth woman to <laughs> get the Nobel Prize in physics. And it, it's interesting because there were only two women during 120 years, uh, Marie Curie and then Maria Gopotmeyer. And then the last five years, three women got the, uh, the Nobel Prize in physics. So there's something happening here. There is more and more women, although it's uh, still very, not very much. But uh, I think the trend is, is positive. I believe it's very important that there are more and more women that, uh, that uh, do physics. Uh, and it's important to have uh, diversity in a research group. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of positive and I really hope that th this trend that we may see will continue. Talking about uh, what you're doing right now, I mean, you said that, uh, you know, uh, obviously winning the Nobel Prize is very important. How has that changed your, your, your life? Oh, it has really changed my, my life a lot uh, because I get so many uh, uh, requests for interviews, for uh, giving lectures. Uh, so and it's um, very much from Sweden, from France. Both countries uh, are very happy with the prize uh, for, from everywhere. And also uh, a theme is uh, really women in science. So I got a lot of requests to talk about uh, uh, women in, in, uh, in science. So it, it has changed a lot. Uh, but at the same time, uh, giving these uh, Nobel lectures, I think uh, it's important. Uh, to inspire the young generation, so I'm uh, happy to do it for a while at least. I hope this will not uh, uh, be too long, but yes. So and in Minneapolis, a lot of young people starting their careers in physics. So what's your message to them? Well, my message to, uh, to them is that it's, uh, it's a great career. So if they like to uh, do physics, uh, they like research, if uh, they are a little bit passionate about it, I think that's important. They also need to be stubborn to uh, be able to continue in spite of uh, difficulties. I think they, they should just go for it. It's, it's a great uh, job. That's great advice. Now, my final question, as always with these type of interviews, is an impossible question. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's the APS's 125th uh, anniversary. Looking forward to the next 125 years in physics, what do you see? Well, this is a very difficult <laughs> question. I don't know the answer. But what I, I think I, I uh, uh, discovered during the 40 years of my career is that uh, I think at, uh, today there are more things to, uh, to understand in physics than they were 40 years ago. We, we discover more things, but there is even more things we don't understand and, and we should try to understand. So, uh, and also uh, I really believe that uh, science uh, is going to help uh, society to, to, uh, to solve uh, big problems, for example, climate change. So I think it's really important to, uh, I think there is a lot to do in, uh, in science and in physics in particular. Well, thank you very much indeed for that. And thank you so much indeed for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.